as many of you know, we temporarily uh, stopped taking new patients, uh, in part because the patient load had gotten too much, and others that were making a major uh, change in the practice. Um, those changes have gone through, and so now we're opening up to taking uh, new patients. Uh, and so the next two videos will uh, be on uh, that aspect. Um, so the first group of patients that I think that we can uh, help uh, are those that might benefit from our approach to slowing the growth of the cancer. And uh, so it's worthwhile telling you how we, we came to this uh, current situation. Uh, in the early 1990s, intermittent hormonal therapy uh, was a new thing, uh, and we got into it uh, big time. And we quickly noticed uh, that when we stopped hormonal therapy, uh, the cancer would often regrow pretty quickly. Uh, the general rule in, in our clinic then and now is that if you are on hormonal therapy for one year, you might make off hormonal therapy for a year. Time on equals time off. Uh, at that point, we also got interested in uh, diet and lifestyle, and we focused on uh, offering our patients advice on how to have a heart healthy uh, lifestyle. We began to focus on obesity, cholesterol, diabetes, and other problems, uh, and indeed, uh, it seemed to make a difference in the general health, and we noticed a slowing in the uh, PSA doubling time during the off hormonal therapy time. Uh, roughly in that time interval, the University of Massachusetts uh, published a paper showing, uh, looking at a group of people who had uh, cancer recurrent after radical prostatectomy, and switching to a Mediterranean diet took the doubling time from just under seven months to just under 18 months, uh, doubling time, uh, while, mon while improving the general health. So that became our first uh, tool uh, in managing the disease. Uh, I might mention that uh, Mark Moyet also uh, has a similar focus on, on heart health as we do, so he's probably the most kindred spirit uh, to me. Uh, the next tool was PROSCAR, which blocks the conversion of testosterone to dihydrotestosterone. Uh, and uh, the folks in Vancouver who developed intermittent hormonal therapy had made a comment that PROSCAR seemed to prolong the period off hormonal therapy. So we started to use it, and indeed, it was associated with a, uh, a slowing in PSA doubling time between hormonal therapy bouts. Uh, that seemed to help. Um, since then, of course, Avidart came along, and we have the ART trial, a placebo-controlled randomized uh, between uh, placebo and Avidart in PSA-only recurrent prostate cancer. Uh, and they showed that Avidart uh, slowed the cancer enough to delay the need for hormonal therapy by more than 50% and uh, slowed the development of metastatic disease. Uh, that has been a key part of our program. Um, Proscar, Avidart, and a healthy diet, uh, the time off hormonal therapy went from one year to two years to two and a half to three years uh, for a bulk of our patients. Uh, since then, of course, uh, literature on cholesterol control uh, and prostate cancer have uh, come to the fore. Uh, and also the risk of uh, hyperlipidemia for cardiovascular disease during hormonal therapy. And so we began to use statins uh, aggressively in those patients who have uh, cardiovascular risk. And lo and behold, uh, there are now a whole series of papers on the impact of the favorable impact of statins on uh, the progress of prostate cancer. Uh, and the final tool was metformin, uh, which we just had done a video about. So 
Avodart, metformin, and cholesterol management with statins if needed, and a heart-healthy diet and exercise. That's the program we use to slow prostate cancer down. Uh, so in addition to the intermittent hormonal therapy seen uh, in patients who have PSA-only recurrent disease, uh, this often slows or even arrests PSA progression. Uh, you could view this as a direct expression of the ARTS trial uh, results. Uh, so that's an, another group of patients that benefit. Uh, and uh, as of a few years ago, we moved this into our active surveillance program. So our active surveillance program isn't just monitoring the cancer for progression, but we put patients on uh, Avidart, uh, metformin, uh, and we aggressively approach uh, cholesterol management with statins if needed. Uh, and uh, we've been very gratified with the, the impact. Uh, a sizable number of men, the Gleason 6s, will shrink and even disappear on this program. Uh, because you could argue, well, what does that mean because you don't have any survival data, and that's a fair objection. Uh, but at least we're not seeing uh, progressions. We're seeing cancer go the other way on MRI uh, measurement in many patients. Uh, this program is now well established, uh, and since its major emphasis is optimizing general health uh, as part of controlling the cancer, uh, uh, the person in my clinic who directly manages is Dana Overstreet, who is a certified uh, uh, family nurse practitioner. She also worked at Cardiac Intensive Care Unit and worked at UVA Urology for uh, nine months and in impotence and incontinence clinic, so she brings a lot of skills. Uh, but we're very excited about our, our program with uh, uh, slowing the growth of prostate cancer in these clinical settings. Um, we also use it in advanced patients who get a complete remission as a way of uh, slowing recurrence of the patients who are on remission. Uh, so if you're interested in taking part in this, contact the office and we'll get in touch with Dana. Thank you.